Okay, everybody, it's been a while since we made a video on the eco diesel crankshaft and motor issues. Uh, so we thought we'd make one today and explain something about the motors that are available for sale and then the motors that we sell and then the actual uh, problems of the eco diesel. So right here is a customer's truck right here. It is getting a Gen 3 conversion, which is what he's working on over there on the forklift. And that's going to go in there because the Gen 3 conversion is the fastest thing to do versus doing the rebuild. The rebuild obviously takes a little bit. Um, we have a hard time uh, because of the machine shops keeping up with people's orders. Uh, but right now we are dropping off a, a whole truckload of blocks at the machine shop. So if anyone is looking for a rebuilt eco diesel engine with a new crankshaft that corrected the issue, you can go to my website at www.ecodieselusa.com. And then that, uh, there's options for the motors. Otherwise you can reach out to me. Um, so now I'm gonna go over a motor that we just stripped apart. So this is a motor that I just stripped apart of a customer's. This truck had just shy of 70,000 miles um, and had not been deleted yet or anything and the motor failed. Okay, now you can see a busted crank here. This crank is not from this motor. This is from another engine we just took apart. Uh, it had about 100,000 miles. And what ended up happening was the customer had a 14, uh, had the camshaft gear failure, took it in a dealership, had it fixed. Uh, on the way home from the dealership, the crankshaft broke. Uh, this customer got lucky because he shut it off right away. He did not have any spun mains. And so the engine itself didn't have any damage. So the engine gets to get rebuilt without having to go through a bunch of machine work. Um, now, if you look here, you can see on this customer's motor, there is nice hatch marks in all the cylinders. Um, it is a very clean engine because it's low miles. You can see the head here. There's nothing in, there's nothing gross in it. There's nothing built up in it. Uh, the customer took very good care of it. I mean, look, there's barely any buildup in where the intake manifold was. You can see all the cross hatches on all the cylinders. Um, but he still spun the main bearings. So if you look at the crank here, I know it's hard to see on video, but you can see the damage on all of the mains. Now, here is the bearings themselves. Here's some of the main bearings. You can see the damage done to them. You can see that they're melted. I mean, they literally melted over, they got so hot. And then we have the rod bearings. Now, the mains fail first, okay? Now, when the main bearings fail, it doesn't produce a knock sound because the crankshaft isn't bouncing around. You can see here that this main here doesn't have any damage to it, which means the crank was still pretty centered on the end. But if you notice, all the rods have damage. Now, if you look at the rods, the wear on it uh, is uneven. The wear is uneven because the crank, during this time, the crank is flexing, and that is what's causing the tear up of the main bearings. And then as it flexes, it slowly wears down on the connecting rod bearings. Okay, now this crank is not usable. Now, there's somebody that sells motors, um, here in the US, there's only one other person that sells motors besides me, and they are repairing these cranks. These cranks are, no, are not repairable, and they're not reusable. And the reason why is you can see, you can see the heat marks on them. So a, 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 forged, a forged crankshaft like this, once it gets heated up like that and superheated, the metal is get soft. You take this to any quality machine shop in the United States and they're going to test the crank and tell you that it should not for any reason be reused. The only reason people are welding and repolishing these is to save money so they can sell the engines cheaper. The problem is your motor is gonna fail sooner than it did the first time. You'll be lucky if you make it to the exact same miles that you had the first time. So that is why these cranks don't get reused. That is why we have a custom made aftermarket crank that gets replaced instead of this. Um, it's not good for the motor. I mean, if you're, gonna re if you're gonna spend that kind of money to redo your truck, to redo the engine on your truck, why would you risk buying an engine that has the exact same crankshaft in it that caused the problem in the first place? This is manufactured defects. There's no 
carbon buildup in the oil galleys. None of that crap that you read online from five, six years ago is true. All it is is a bunch of keyboard warrior type people making assumptions on what actually goes wrong with the engine itself. Unless somebody actually takes these apart and builds them, they have no experience on what they're talking about or what causes the failure. Especially if the person is taking these cranks, having all of this welded and reground and then reused in an engine, cheap. We had to have bearings made. We had to have a crank made. A lot of parts that we use, we had to have made custom in order to rebuild these engines. So do your due diligence when you do buy a rebuilt motor and make sure if you're not buying an engine from us that you're buying it from somebody who's using a brand new crankshaft, not a modified one, and make sure that they're using new bearings, make sure they're having the block machined properly because all of these blocks, once this tears up like this, the block has to get decked and then re-line board in order to be usable again. So make sure that somebody is doing all of that if you're buying a motor from them. Otherwise, you are just wasting your money. Yeah, fine, you could do it and trade it in a dealership real fast, but all you're doing is screw the next guy. So anybody has any questions, feel free to ask, and maybe I'll make another video for you guys. But that is essentially what is going on here.